a lot of the AI products we see today are solutions without a problem. And we need to talk about Copilot, Google Gemini, Apple Intelligence, and really understanding these big tech companies and what's happening with AI. Uh, as some AI is really good. I'm going to get into that too. Like I, I use Claude, I use GPT. I use these things on a daily basis, but there's certain amounts of, uh, I don't even want to say the word AI anymore or artificial intelligence. I want to say pieces of software because that's what they are. It's not just some alien brain sitting in a data center somewhere just learning at a rapid rate and Skynet's going to activate and we're going to have Terminator 2 going on. That's not what AI is as it is today. We do not see that or AGI. I'm not getting into that weeds. I'm just telling you what it's doing, the integration. We had Microsoft Office rebranding to O365 Copilot. We have Apple Intelligence launching on the iPhone 16. We have Google Gemini being integrated into Google Gmail, which a lot of people use these things but we need to understand what it actually is, what it's actually doing, and why are they just giving it to us? Are these features, is this a solution? And I would say it's a solution without a problem. And uh, I wanted to just kind of organize my thoughts on paper to, to kind of tell you what that is. Um, the, the thing about this is Copilot, Apple Intelligence, and also Gemini, they're absorbing tons of our data just a ridiculous amount of data. Now, most of the time they have come out and said it is stored locally on your device. You've heard that, right? They're not uploading every piece of data that is done by AI to their servers, whether it's Google, whether it's uh, Microsoft, right? What you don't hear them say is, is AI being used to create profiles on you? Are those profiles being being uploaded. They are very specific. Every single interview I've seen saying data that is absorbed by Copilot or data that is absorbed by Apple intelligence that is not being used or uploaded to, or <laughs> they say usually uploaded to Apple, that raw data. But AI is essentially a big search engine in this respect. And let's not call it AI. Let's just call it surveillance software. And why would they do this? Are they just, you know, if you throw your tinfoil hat on, you got people saying it's a surveillance state, you got all these things going on. I think it's actually just much simpler than that. It's the fact that they can make a lot of money with this information. They can track your habits. They can get to know you. And then that makes it very easy to sell products to you. Uh, just think of it as a, a way for a company to make it easier to sell things to you. And also that data is very, very lucrative. It's, it's, these are all free products. They're not making money off of some monthly subscription. So where are they making the money? And whenever there is not a, a charge for the service, typically that means you're the product. Your data is what the actual worthwhile is for that company. And that, that data is worth a lot of money. So these profiles are what you need to watch out for. But, uh, and then you also have the privacy concerns of everything on your screen being recorded. So you don't really need end-to-end -end encryption. You don't need all these other things that have come out from a privacy standpoint because, well, <laughs> if you take pictures of the screen, I mean, kind of ruins the whole privacy or encryption aspect. So I get that as well. But also you, you have things like, uh, like Roomba I'm going to use. It's AI powered, right? You can see this, it sweeps your floor a lot better. Great. But eh, not so much when it takes pictures of you on the toilet. This was actually from 2020, by the way. So sorry for the grainy image. I'm sure this is a lot better in 2024 with uh, the, the stuff. So whenever you see AI slapped on the side of something, yeah, maybe, maybe just take a step back and go, do I really want that to be AI? And the answer is probably not. And... From a Gmail perspective, let's say Google Mail with Gemini, that's also ingesting all our data. Anything with Copilot, Apple Intelligence, these types of things, they use this data to improve those systems. The other benefit besides advertising, besides surveillance, is the fact that we can use that AI to improve 
the the AI, uh, the software. Let's just call it the software. It's used to improve that existing piece of software. At the end of the day, a lot of these models are simply big if-else statements. If this, then this. And the more data they have, the better and more accurate that is. So it's using your information, your documents, your emails, your all those things to improve it, to make it better. So you also have that aspect of it. Are you okay with that? Because a lot of times they don't really say where they're getting all this data from to improve these pieces of software. And, and that's the big thing is they need to be more upfront about using that. And frankly, if we're getting our data used to improve that, shouldn't we extract some value from them? Because they're getting all this benefit and we're getting almost none of it. So there's that aspect of it. Now, I don't want to be like a, a just doom and gloom all the time here. <laughs> I really do like a lot of AI when it comes to the programming aspect, and I do use it quite often. But I like to call those those what they are, LLMs. And they are very good in certain applications. Uh, uh, two really big applications I use it for is like generative fill for thumbnails or something like that. It's really easy to use that for improving a picture or removing an object from a picture. Fantastic. Or improving a piece of software or code. If I have a huge piece of code, I'm, I'm making a piece of software, it's much easier to ask and go, hey, where do you see syntax errors in this program? Or maybe even if I'm not even looking at my code, I might have it analyze a function and say, hey, what does this function do? Or what, what does this do? It's very good for a lookup. But those are good applications of the technology. Those are great applications of the technology. Heck, I, I'm probably going to be doing a video on a piece of terminal that uses AI, which is fantastic. But where it isn't a good use of the technology is when it's system-wide, where it's everywhere. Because what is Copilot doing? What is Gemini doing? What is Apple AI doing? I want you to think about, are these benefits worth everything I talked about? Are they worth all these tradebacks? Are this really so solving a problem that exists that you have? Chances are, no. These aren't problems you have. These are made up problems. And the solution is, well, big tech wants a lot more money. And they can get that with you, with your data. That's what Copilot, that's what Gemini, that's what Apple Intelligence truly is. They just haven't heard anybody say it. So I obviously just wanted to say this video about it. I love a lot of AI. It's just so much, it's a marketing ploy or it's just a, a, a brand slapped on the side of it. Or sometimes it's just this big tech, big uh, machine I use to extract data from their users. But at the end of the day, um, where it's most beneficial is when it's just an autocorrect on steroids. Now, having said that, I also didn't really touch too much on how to be self-sufficient. Another aspect of it is I think there is the dumbing down of the population. So I do want to take alternatives to these because right now there's big monopolies in the operating system space, in the email space, and uh, frankly, in the phone space too. And I think having alternatives, while I don't think you could ever be secure and private in today's world, uh, unless maybe you live in the middle of nowhere and you've thrown out all smartphones and all technology and you just live on the land. I get that. I mean, I watch those videos too. God bless you. Uh, but I don't like pooping in a bucket and I, I, I'm kind of a creature comforts. I, I, I like those things. <laughs> but uh, I, I really want to show the alternatives because at the end of the day, we need to get away from some of these big tech companies. Eventually, they're just going to try to extract too much value. And there's going to be a time where your email is no longer $5 a month. It goes up to $10 a month. Or it goes from $10 a month to $20 a month because everyone forgot how to do email. Or everyone forgot how to uh, do office programs without actual competition. There is competitors out there. There is alternatives for all these things. And uh, that's just something I have coming up. I just wanted to make this video saying, here's kind of the state of AI as I see it, what's happening in the, the place. And some future videos I have planned is one, obviously, uh, more of a Linux to Windows for power users. Then we also have, hey, hosting your own email. What does that even look like in 2025? And then also um, 
looking at mobile alternatives. I've, I've talked about things and, you know, I think some people made fun of me with my little calculator phone that doesn't even have any smart apps on it. Um, but there, there's a lot of really cool things happening in 2025. So don't feel like all is wo woes, all is lost. You know, it's, it's not. There's a lot of really amazing things happening. And, and I, I'm very hopeful. And, and frankly, I'm very um, surprised at a lot of the up and coming generation. A lot of people don't give the teenagers and 20 year olds that are coming into the space uh, and learning these things a lot enough credit. There is some people that, yes, they're just zombies. They're just sitting there swiping on their phone. Um, but you, you, I'm very hopeful. I, I know a lot of people like to have this doom and gloom kind of thing, but I see us turning the page on a lot of these things and, and things have gotten a lot better in like the Linux space. Things have gotten a lot better in honestly the, the self-hosted email space. Uh, I don't recommend you go buy a service anymore. You can actually do it yourself for cheaper uh, than having to do it all through through a, a big service. And I'm not going to shill like Proton Mail or anything like that either. I think they're too expensive. And frankly, the product isn't that good. Uh, obviously, it's probably better than G Suite or, or Gmail. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm rambling at this point. There's just a lot of really cool things. And I just wanted to make this AI video saying a lot of what I'm seeing big tech try and push down our throats is just garbage that uh, nobody wanted, nobody asked for. And the end user, I think too much, uh, I think the, these big companies have discredited us as users so much. They think of us all, all as morons. I think even, uh, I think it was Elon Musk that said, you know, hey, I wouldn't even hire an American anymore. <laughs> We're too expensive and we don't do enough work. Uh, and, you know, it, it's probably a, a misquote, but it, that's the gist of what he was saying. And to me, I'm like, no, there's a lot of really bright minds. And there's a lot of people that can uh, solve these things. And I'm making videos specifically getting away from these big uh, these big companies to do it. And I'm doing it on Google's own YouTube. <laughs> so we'll see. It'd be funny if my channel just disappeared one day. I, I doubt that. <laughs>